We're here with Kara Santa Maria. She's the host of Take Part Live, which is going to be on the Pivot Network. How are you doing? Good. Good. Uh, what is Take Part Live? So Take Part Live is a new show that's going to be on Pivot, which sure. is Participant Media's new television network. And so we haven't started it yet, so it's really exciting because I think it'll come into its, own, into its own as we work on it. But it'll be hosted by myself and Jacob Soberoff and some rotating hosts here at the beginning. And it's a show for millennials um, about kind of what's important to young people today, news of the day, current events, and also, you know, probably some tech, some innovation. And we'll really be focusing on how we can take part, how you can take part, and featuring prominent individuals who are taking part themselves and who are affecting change in their communities. That is fantastic. I can't wait for that to happen. I'm excited. Um, why is it important for the presentation of science in the popular media to be accurate and accessible? I mean, obviously it should be accurate. Yes. The facts should be presented as facts, but I mean, sometimes the presentation can kind of skew that and make them not so fact sounding. Sure, I think, I think both accuracy and accessibility are important, and I think it's a balance that science communicators always try to achieve. You know, for me it's really important that I'm servicing the community and that, you know, I'm speaking at a level and at both a level kind of in terms of uh, jargon, but also at a level in terms of interest that really does speak to the general public. But I also want to kind of maintain that cred with the scientific community so that they'll continue to talk to me, they'll <laughs> continue to allow me to interview them. And, uh, you know, the more that they see the work that I do and say that's legit, the more I'm going to be able to continue to try to do good work. But when it really comes down to it, I'm like I said, I'm servicing the public. And I think one of kind of the core mantras of science communication is that you should never underestimate the intelligence of your audience, but you should always underestimate their vocabulary. Because when we're talking to people who have jobs that aren't in the sciences, they don't have the training to understand all the jargon that scientists use. And most of the time, communicating science really just comes down to explaining what a lot of the words mean. Sounds a lot like, oh, I, I'd definitely be interested in that, uh, being a linguist, so that Oh, fun. yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun to me. Yeah. Um, why do you think the typical presentation of science in popular media um, is just so flawed? Yeah. So, um, so wrong most of the time. I think, um, you know, it's there, there are multiple reasons for that. I think one of the reasons is that a lot of times reporters, so if we're just talking about um, the news media, reporters don't have the training to be able to appropriately analyze a story and to be able to, you know, read a peer-reviewed journal article, find the flaws in it, and report it from a scientific perspective. Oftentimes what happens is that reporters are reporting from press releases, and sometimes those press releases can be written kind of like they're sort of jazzed up and sometimes there are a lot of liberties, kind of poetic liberties taken with especially the effects or the um, the kind of results of the particular study. A lot of times we try to overreach what those results could really mean for the general public in order to make the scientific story sound important because we're living in a world now where news media competes for ratings and so that's a big problem. Also a lot of science happens kind of stepwise and piecemeal it's really rare that there's a big kind of groundbreaking discovery in the sciences sure. that didn't take 10 years to get there. And so when we're trying to report about the process, I think what we need to do as science communicators is improve our ability to tell stories. The more that we can tell good scientific stories, the more interested people are going to be in the stories that we're telling. And we'll see, I think, more legitimate science on the airways. But also there's this issue of pseudoscience. Pseudoscience is called pseudoscience because it is just that. It's almost science, it sounds like science, it uses big scientific words. It kind of wears the mask of science to deliver a message that's not scientific and it's really hard for the general public to be able to tell the difference between the two because they don't have the tools to do so and they're not trained to do so. So I would encourage anybody who does have a scientific background to really kind of take part, whether you're doing it on the air or you're just doing it at the dinner table to help kind of break through some of that bullshit in science communication, or I should say pseudoscience communication. Sure, no problem. Can I say bullshit on the air? I'm <laughs> sorry. It's fine with me. Okay. I mean